Okay. Besiata de Shmaya Shvuas. So I want to start like this. The um, Posuk in Shemois, in the beginning of Perikutes, explains us a little bit of the episode of what happened by Makun Torah, by Kabbalah Satoya. And the Torah says like this. Bachoidesh Hashlishi, Lotseis Bnei Yisrael Meretz Mitzrayim, Bayoim Hazeh, Bo Midbar Sinai. As I state in the Torah, Gedoisha. The next Posuk, Posuk base. Vayisu mirefidim, they traveled from Refidim. Vayavo midbar sina, vayachanu ba midbar. Famously, vayichan shom yishol neged ahor. Very, very interesting sequence of events over here. And it seems to be a problem, the Mephoshim ask, with the order of the Psukim. Remember, first Pasuk says, they arrived at Har Sinai. Next Pasuk. They travel from Rafidim and they ravel the house Sinai. There seems to be a problem in the order of events. And they, many of the Mephoshim ask this question. So I want to tell you a beautiful parish of the Arachim HaKadosh. The Arachim HaKadosh has an incredible idea how to understand this. And this is our introduction into Shvuas, Be'ez HaShem, Be'siyat HaDishmai, Abba'a Leinu, Letoiva, Tov Shin, Pe'alaf, that we're going to try to gain as much as we can from this Kabbaldik Yontav. Darachayim HaKadosh brings a medrash, an incredible medrash. It's a medrash in Bereshis Rabbah, he quotes. And the Lashon that he had, he says three words which we have to understand. It says Darachayim HaKadosh from the medrash Rabbah. Ahava Mekalkeles Hashura. You know what that means? Love can change things. Sometimes a person, and this is why we've talked about this, we've discussed Shidduchim and marriage and everything else and dating, that sometimes a person's personal love to something, or someone for that matter, can sort of tilt him to one direction. He can lose himself. He can possibly not be thinking straight, or not be doing things that are straight because of that love. That's what the Medrash tells us from, and the Rechaim HaKadosh is quoting that. Why? Explains the Rechaim HaKadosh an incredible idea. Because Matan Torah, the day that we receive the Torah, is a day of such anticipation a day that we wait we wait for that day we waited for that that incredible incredible day and therefore we were makabal the Torah and because the Torah says HaKadosh, listen we would never be able to say the words ourselves but because HaKadosh is saying it because the Torah was so excited but the love for Torah that excitement and anticipation the, the Torah just had to say it just, just had to say it even though it hadn't happened yet. It was really the next Pasuk. But the love, that excitement for Kabbalah Satoira was so great. This is the Rechaim HaKadosh. The love of Torah was so great that it, it ruined things. It sort of messed up the Seder Hadron, the sequence. And this is the Tachlis Habriya. This is the whole Tachlis, the purpose for the Rabbani Shem creating the world was for this day. And therefore the Torah, they came. And then the Torah continues, well, they travel from you, feed them and everything else. The boys say, I hope you understood the Arachayim HaKadosh. It's absolutely mind-boggling that Sadiqim bring down that when the Arachayim HaKadosh wrote these lines that I just quoted to you, from his pen, there were sparks coming out. As I state that Sadiqim was going on Bishas when the Arachayim HaKadosh was writing those few words that we just mentioned. In fact, the Salon of brought down now, when Arachayim HaKadosh wrote this part, again, what we just mentioned, his pen, he lost control of his pen, and he just wrote whatever he felt inside him. Something very unusual. We never find such a thing. It's probably the most unusual Arachayim HaKadosh that you will find in the entire Torah. And again, the anticipation of Kabbalah Satoira. And that's what we're holding right now. We're holding a few days before Kabbalah Satoira, before... The Gavaldi Giyantov of Shavu, I said I wanted to just give that little bit of an introduction and a few more minutes of introduction to understand what are we anticipating, what are we waiting for? The Svasemes is a beautiful thing. The Svasemes tells us that every Yontov is Chashev. We know every Yontov is beautiful, Doraisa, Dorabon, and every Yontov we look forward to, every Yontov has its meaning. Every Yontov is special. But there's something special about Shavu. Explains the Svasemes why. He says it's sandwiched between, on one end you've got Pesach, on the other end you've got Sukkos. Or either direction, it doesn't really make a difference. But basically between these two Yomim Toivim, you've got the Yontav of Shavuos. And the Svasemis calls it a Beriah Hatichoin. It's the middle beam. 
we all know that the middle beam of the building is what keeps up the building. You have things on either side that can shake it that way, you can shake it that way. But the middle beam, that's what keeps it straight. That's what keeps it strong. So the Sfas Emes Shavuos is the middle beam. Why? Because it's the side of the whole creation of the entire world. The whole creation of the world from the beginning of time to the end of time was for this. Was for Shavuos, was for Makhim Torah, was for Klal Yisrael to receive the Torah. And that is the foundation of everything. And that's why it's so special. The al Shemoni. Baruch Yisrael brings down a Gavaldiga Marshal. He says a Ben Melech, son of the king, was sick. And he recovered from his sickness. So the king told him, don't worry, I'm not sending you straight back to school. Wait a few months, relax. Get your koiches back. Get your strength back. Right? Get your emotional state back. And then, you know, after you've rested up, I'll send you to school over there. Says the Medrash, that's what's going on. And that's the message of Kalali. So when they left Mitzrayim, right? Just over six weeks ago, we were sitting in Seder night, and we basically, as the Rambam told us, Ki'ilu Yotzim in Mitzrayim, we pictured ourselves leaving Mitzrayim. Here we are, just over six weeks, a few more days left to go, until we get to Matan Torah. Seven weeks later, Kalal Yisrael were told the same thing, says the Medrash. They couldn't just go straight to Gabal HaSat Torah. It was impossible. They were holding on such a low madriga, they weren't holding there. They weren't holding by being accepting the Torah from the Rabbani Yishlam. They weren't holding there, they weren't there yet. They needed a few weeks to rest up in order to get their kirchas back, in order to understand what they're getting, in order to appreciate what they're getting. And that, says the Medrash, is what we're doing right now. That anticipation, that excitement, that preparation. We all know that the Torah does not really call Shavuos Zman Matan Torah Seinu. Right, there are many names for Shavuos, right? Chagabi Kurim, lots of different ideas. Why specifically Torah picked those names? Not for now. We all agree that we left Mitzrayim on a Thursday. And we know there's a machoikis if the Torah is given on Volvo Zion, but I can put everyone's mask and the Torah is given on Shabbos. Let's make the calculation together, Rabbi Isai. If they left Mitzrayim on a Thursday and the Torah was given on a Shabbos, so that means if the 15th of Nisan was a Thursday, make the Cheshvan 50 days later, is a Friday, not a Shabbos. So why are we celebrating the day before as opposed to the actual day? That's the question. Many of them first asked this question. Rav Shinshim Rafal Hirsch and his parish brings a beautiful understanding to this. And he says that the day that the whole universe became cloudy, thundering, lightning, and the Rabbani Shalom came down to give Torah to Klal Yisrael, that's not a simcha. That's not a simcha. What's the simcha? What is the simcha? It says the Shim Shim of Al Hirsch is the day before. The day that Klal Yisrael realized that we need the Torah. That's considered to be a simcha. And that's how we celebrate the day before as opposed to the day after. Not the day that we got it, but the day before. Why? Because the day before is the day that Klal Yisrael realized we need this Torah. And many people think, what do I need this Torah for? You think I need all these rules? You think I need all these, all these things telling me to do it this way? This is how you have to tie your shoelace when you wake up in the morning. This is how you have to wash your hands. This is how you have to get dressed. This is how you daven. This is how you make a bracha. Mom is governing my entire life. That's not the simcha, says Rav Shem Hash. The simcha is when a yid realizes we need the Torah. We need the Torah for our lives. We need the Torah to be successful. We need the Torah to make us into better people. When we have that, that's a real simcha. That's why specifically we go and celebrate the day before. That's, by the way, the difference between Shavuos and Samchaz Torah. Many people ask, what's the difference? The Maitre are both celebrating the Torah. Samchaz Torah were dancing and Shavuos were learning. What's the difference? What's Pshat? And the answer is very simple. Samchaz Torah, we finished the Torah. That's wonderful. Beautiful. It's a Kavaldic Samchaz. We dance. It's beautiful. It's Kavaldic. On Shavuos, could, could be Mulusa dance. Could be Zuzah. Kavaldic Samchaz. But it's a different type of Samchaz. It's a Samchaz of the anticipation of the realization that we need the Torah. That we need this. We want this. That's why we stay up all night. We show the Rabbanishon, Rabbanishon, we want this. We want this Torah, we're waiting for this Torah seven weeks. We've been counting day after day. In anticipation, we want the Torah. When we realize that, that's the real Simcha. The Baron Cutler, Zatzal, has a very famous question on the Yontav of Shavuos. And he asks, the Torah has not given us one practical mitzvah to remember this Yontav. Incredible thing. Where do you find such a thing? Every other Yontav has its mitzvah. 
mitzvah of Dalet Minim, or Sukkah on Sukkos, the mitzvah of Matzah, the Gadot of Lebuncha on Pesach, even the Durabonans, you've got Megillah, you've got Matan Yosef Yonim, Shlach Monis on Purim, you've got the Menorah on Chan, everything's got its mitzvah. What is the mitzvah on Shavuos, apart from the cheesecake? What's the mitzvah? As I think Rebaran, Rebaran answers, like a Gavaldi Yisait, and he says that on most Yom and Toivim, it's a commemoration. That means, what are we doing? The Torah has given us ways to remember what happened. So sit down, say the night, eat matzah, lechem oini. Oh, you'll remember what happened. V'gadol abincha, go tell your children. Spread it to future generations. Sukkahs, sit in a sukkah. Anane akovoid, dalad minim. Light the menorah, the nace of the oil. Remember what happened. The Megillah, Pesuminis, are beautiful. On Shavuos, says Rebaran, there's nothing that we can do to commemorate. That's not, what's, that's not what it's all about. If you look at the beginning of the Nesiva Shalom, the son of a Rebbe brings on his first Maima on Shavuos. He says, this is, and he brings from that reason, it's Nitzchis. It's, it's not that it happened. And if it happened, now we have to remember it every year, which is what we do, says Rabbi Aaron, on the other Yom Im Toivim. The pshat over here is, we're not remembering on Shavuos. Let's do things to remember my Midar Sinai. Right? That's not the pshat. It's very nice, the flowers, in the Besa in the, in the, in the Knesses, in the shul, beautiful, it's wonderful. But that's not what we're doing it for. It's a minig, it's not a halacha. What we're trying to do on Shavuos is live the Torah. Says Rabbi Aaron, when a Yid opens up a Gemara, when a Yid opens up a Sefer Torah, a Chumash, whatever it is, and he learns Torah, the same revelation, the same Nisim, the same Siyat HaDishmai that Klal Yisrael got then, at Har Sinai, we can get every single day in our Bismedrash, in our rooms, in our kitchens, in our dining rooms, in our cars, in our hallways, wherever it is. That's the godless of Torah. And that's, the, that's what says Rebaran, is what's going on in Shavuos. It's not to commemorate what happened. That's why there's no mitzvah. We're not trying to remember what happened. We're living the Torah. We're living our lives as Torah. Like with Shintra of as we just quoted. It's the day that we realize that we need the Torah, that we want the Torah in our lives. That we say to a Bani Shalom, we want this Torah, we need it for our lives. Our lives depend on it. Our whole lives are different lives. Look at the lives of Yidin compared to the lives of people who are not learning Torah, it's, it's a different life. It's a different life. That's what, that's what Shavuos is. And that's just the introduction that I wanted to give you before we start the Benhogim and various halachas. Just the introduction to understand what is Shavuos? What are we waiting for? Svar Makdosh should bring down that it's a Yom Adin. The Baruch Mamej, but others as well. That they, were, they were scared. Shavuos, they were, posh, they were scared. And they asked, what were we scared about? Just like Rosh Hashanah is a Yom Adin on Gashmias, so Shavuos is the Yom Adin on Ruchmias. People are bothered the whole year. I'm not, I'm not learning enough. I'm not enjoying my learning. It's just not going. Shavuos, Rabbi Zay, is the Yom Adin of Torah. How much Torah are you going to absorb? How much are you going to learn? How much it means to you? Is Shavuos. The more you show the Rabbi Nishalayim that you want this Torah, that you're waiting for this Torah, that you need this Torah, the more the Rabbi Nishalayim will give you the Siyat of the Shemaya to fill you with the Gavaldi Gatari Be'ez Hashem tomorrow we shall continue with the Yatav Dishmaya with many of the Minhogim of Shavuos. Have a wonderful day.